Hello everyone, this is Varsha and you are watching the series of success stories brought to you by Indian Achievers Forum. Once again, we are here with you all to discuss the success story of one more achiever of our and this time we have with us Mr. Naveen Kumar Jha, who is the founder and CEO of The Sourcing Place School Limited. Mr. Naveen comes from a small town in Bihar and has studied textile engineering and international business. Driven by a strong business acumen and leadership abilities, he quickly climbed the ladder in corporate working and finally started his own global venture, The Sourcing Place in India, Hong Kong and China to be at the most strategic locations to serve the apparel ecosystem efficiently. Powered by passion, willpower, vision, and meticulousness, today the firm is one of the top emerging global companies and serving many countries such as India, Bangladesh, Vietnam, Jordan, Africa, Canada. He truly believes that the sourcing place is a factory of global factories and it is of the client, by the client, and for the client. But before we actually start the conversation with him, let's quickly have a look at a very small video telling you about what we actually do. Indian Achievers Forum is driven by a full-fledged advisory board. The board consists of experienced personalities who have excelled in their respective careers. Together, the forum organizes conferences, events, workshops, exhibitions, trade shows and B2B initiatives in India as well as abroad. Where there is passion, there is achievement. And where there is achievement, there is Indian Achievers Forum. Before we actually start the conversation, I'm very keen to know about your idea of, you know, starting this uh, company of yours. Well, I uh, I was working in India till 2011 and then I moved to China uh, to work in several companies. And during on the, in the during course of uh, working for the companies, I could uh, understand that I have some abilities to uh, like um, uh, do some uh, something on my own like uh, for for example the negotiation process the understanding of the uh, products and uh, you know how to deal with and how to channelize that uh, in, in the global scenario those things were uh, coming into my mind and uh, finally i uh, uh, you know thought of uh, putting it into a practical thing in 2018 when i actually uh, started my you know own venture first i started with one uh, local person and then in 2021, I moved to register my own company uh, because initially I was thinking that in China, the registering the company by the foreigners is a little difficult. So I just wanted to have some know-how before I uh, actually go for registering my own company. And when I realized that it is not so difficult, we can do it. So then in 2021, I put my uh, like own regist registration for my own company. Yeah. Right, sir. So, so, you know, uh, nothing comes at, uh, that easy to us and I'm pretty sure that you must have also had certain sort of challenges in your professional role. So if you can please talk about the challenges that you have to face while starting up with a business. Uh, well, the first and foremost challenge is to work in uh, China, which is like the, the, the culture, the language, everything is very difficult, uh, very different from our country. Uh, so uh, that was the first uh, challenge for for me uh, to how to uh, understand the language and uh, so I, I, I studied by myself and I started talking and writing uh, uh, their language then the, the, the it comes to the business part and business part is that uh, the, uh, the area of business is entirely different in China the, the thinking the approach to the business and the, the, the pricing and all these things are very very uh, dynamic in this country uh, as uh, compared to any other country. So uh, that was uh, another challenge to understand the competition well. So that was like in initial days, I used to go to the different factories. I used to uh, coordinate with many people so that I can understand what is actually um, uh, we can uh, get from the from the market. And that, that is how we approach because uh, the comp our company model, business model is uh, solely based on trading. So we don't have uh, our own factory. We have investments in the factories, but we don't own the factories. So that was uh, another big challenge that, um, uh, you know, 
how to get the price point where I can service to the buyers and we can also earn some, some money. So the negotiation process helped me and uh, because I'm also a textile engineer and I have done my uh, MBA in international business. So uh, education wise also I have some training. So that, that was the, the biggest challenge when I started. And then uh, finally it uh, boiled on to the, to the real thing that how to keep the staffs uh, motivated, how to uh, train them, how to bring them to the show because we are catering to the global buyers like Walmart, Macy's, Chico's, Sainsbury, George, you know, they are all very, very organized and very uh, experienced buyers. So how to, uh, you know, um, like uh, train us to feed to those buyers because they have many people to, uh, who are ready to serve them, but why they need us to find those things was the, the challenges uh, in the early days. And then uh, definitely the financial side because for the foreigners the advantages are very less in the, in the foreign soils so uh, that was uh, to to how to uh, like uh, taking the business is one thing and like how to execute it how to give the quality how to give the correct color at the same time the, because we were the new company factories were asking for the advance payment or deposit or these kind of things buyers willing to work on the lcs so uh, and lc was also like long term lc like 90 days lc 60 days lc kind of thing so how to cope up with that business environment, how to, uh, you know, uh, uh, demand and supply those two things, how to match uh, and without uh, like uh, uh, giving some, some bad face to the buyer or bad face to the supplier, keeping our com commitments, keeping our face, like keeping our uh, re reputation in uh, China market also, India market, like in terms of factories, in terms of suppliers. So that we don't uh, do any failure on the on the payments, whatever we have, our commitment is there. So those were the initial challenges what we faced uh, when we started on our own. And slowly, slowly we we covered all these things. Uh, we found a lot of ways, uh, and we set up our uh, like our companies established in India, China, and Hong Kong. So with three countries, we are uh, trying to operate uh, in a in a stable manner and uh, uh, thankfully we are a growing company we have uh, like we have very good uh, uh, hopes uh, this year and uh, hopefully we will uh, will achieve our goals very soon surely you will sir and uh, if i talk about the company the sourcing place what exactly are the product and services that you people are you know delivering to market out there uh, well this is uh, uh, majorly our company is dedicated to the apparel industry now apparel industry if you see uh, there is a vast range of products you know for, from the ladies fashion to the men's fashion to the kids fashion then there are different kind of clothes uh, which is going on like active wear uh, fashion wear like uh, casual uh, wear these kind of things dresses so there are different different kind of fabrications which is in demand and this is uh, like i told uh, this is this is a dynamic field where the things are things, things keep on changing so our main uh, uh, working thing is that we keep an eye on the new things, uh, new, uh, you know, the fashion things are coming up, new fabric technologies which are uh, coming up, uh, new ways of handling the the uh, production uh, with the advantage to the environment. You know, there are a lot of sustainability programs uh, coming, coming up uh, where new innovative fibers are there, new innovative processing techniques are there which saves the water, which saves the like the, the global uh, warming kind of things. They are very effective. So we keep an eye on those things. And uh, we uh, our main focus is to offer to our buyer very exciting products and uh, uh, give them the things which is uh, totally out of like very fresh, very new. Uh, and uh, then um, at the same time, because I'm a, I'm a textile engineer, so I can understand what kind of pricing it should be like, what is the reasonable pricing for those products. So I can, uh, on behalf of clients, I work with the factories and negotiate price based on the raw material, based on the production cost and everything. So what we offer is a very real uh, kind of uh, uh, product uh, uh, experience to our customers. Like they feel like they are doing it. They don't uh, have the right, <clears throat> like this kind of thing that they are not there. So this is what our focus is. We are we call ourselves a sourcing solution company where we offer our customer like suppose my customer is sitting in the US and he do, he is not willing to come to China or India or something. Uh, we we give them uh, such kind of comfort that they don't actually willing to come there and they just tell us that okay you can handle on our behalf. 
So we give them real time information. We, yeah. we tell them what is the actual status of production. We our people are always in the field. They are sitting in the factory. They are watching all the processing things so that uh, we can uh, if there is any problem we can stop it then and there itself without affecting any timeline or without affecting the quality of the product which is uh, which we are going to supply to the customer for example if there is some color which is approved by customer and we feel that the the factory is not able to achieve the same color we stop the production then and there itself we work with the lab room we develop the lab dates we develop the the color samples and uh, uh, you know we work with them to approve it so that uh, during the production, uh, they can achieve this, the same color tone, same depth, everything as per the client. And uh, when client receives it, they feel very happy uh, about it because this is something uh, which is uh, which cannot be written in the book. This cannot cannot be written in the SOP. It cannot be explained on the emails. This is this comes from the experience that what customer wants, which you are uh, able to supply. Great, sir. So now, you know, talking about the future, so what further plans are you having for yourself or for the company in the upcoming years? If you can please share a bit of those plans with us as well. Yeah, the, this industry is uh, very global. Uh, like if I talk about apparel and textile industry, which is my major focus always. So it's a very uh, global kind of industry and the production base are expanding. You know, before it was like maybe uh, the majority of the goods were going from China, but as of now, China, India, Vietnam, uh, Africa, Cambodia, Indonesia, all every every country is trying to come up with a lot of production uh, resources, uh, which is helping the textile industry. So our kind of expansion is that we want to be uh, like right now we are in three countries like India, Bangladesh and uh, Hong Kong. We want to be uh, present in uh, all uh, uh, countries where uh, textile and apparel is the major focus. And uh, we should have the clear uh, understanding of what is uh, going on globally. Uh, as I told you that our focus is buyer, um, you know, sourcing solution for buyers. So uh, we want to provide them a platform where they can just feel very, you know, very uh, like uh, comfortable working with us. And they think that whatever they are paying to us, uh, we deserve it. So we want to earn our margins by, um, you know, uh, doing these kind of things. So one, one part of expansion is that we want to be present to, to all these uh, the potential companies, uh, countries where the uh, fabric and apparel things are happening. Second thing is that we, our goal is to, you know, give more employment and training to this sector. So we are working towards that. Uh, every, uh, you know, whenever we have uh, any opportunity, we always try to add the staff uh, globally, like in India office or Hong Kong office or China office. And then we also want to uh, train the staff, you know, like stitching uh, people, and then the you know the folding people packaging people you know who are in the packing units and then uh, we want to work a lot of uh, things on logistics because logistics is again a major part which plays into the uh, into the supply chain the logistics uh, it comes cost also and timeline also so our uh, further uh, if i just summarize the expansion plan is just to uh, be in the uh, the countries and uh, secondly, we should give uh, more, our major focus is to give to employment and uh, training to this sector as much as we can, because I think we are uh, good in that. Uh, on, in terms of CSR, right now we don't have any plan to donate or something like that. We just want to be a part of the industry and we just put our efforts to make this industry better. Right, sir. And I wish you all the success for all these plans of yours. Thank you. Okay, so now moving ahead and talking about this uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat campaign, you know, uh, an initiative by Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji. So what do you think of this concept of becoming self-reliant and also how is your company working towards this? Well, Atmanirbhar Bharat is a very beautiful concept and uh, uh, as I said that uh, there is a lot of uh, sourcing solutions, sourcing gaps are there which need to be filled up. And this industry is uh, totally driven by timelines. So the quick timelines are very, very important. For example, some brands uh, like Zara and all, they are working on a very quick turnover, uh, turnaround. So the Atmanirbhar Bharat, the basic uh, idea of the uh, this uh, thing is that the, uh, the if the garment uh, is going to India, the fabric, raw material, everything should be procured within uh, the country. And in that terms, uh, if the factories can start producing, start imitating the, the, the global fabrics, which is 
like which uh, for example new 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 kind of fibers are coming nylon or uh, you know in polyester there are a lot of variants are coming if our country can make those products that will be really helpful in quick turn around of the products so uh, for atmanirbhar bharat we are also uh, working on it like i have attended the bharat text this time and i met with many uh, suppliers and I, i in my mind what i am thinking is that most of the buyers are are uh, their head offices are in located in, in hong kong so i'm already working on um, uh, with many factories in india and i'm trying to understand what kind of product they are making what are the price points i want to uh, show it to my customers uh, in, in hong kong and shanghai and i want to want them to select and uh, tell the indian counterpart to buy the uh, product from those factories the reason being that uh, within india if uh, we Uh, try to market then it it uh, it is like uh, kind of uh, not making much sense one uh, the managers in the indian buying houses will be offended that why we should work with you we can work directly and second is that um, uh, they might uh, feel that you know this person is not in uh, uh, sitting in india right now and why how can he control the the things so this comfort i think uh, this point i it is uh, for me it is easier to make my uh, uh, hong kong uh, offices and uh, shanghai offices make uh, can understand it well because for them i am very closer to them so they can have good control and they can find some benefit in working through us in spite of working directly with the indian factory plus i i saw that um, majority of the buying houses in india in located in ncr they are focused on focusing on north in factories mainly for example like oro or nahar or vardhaman these kind of factories i think there are many setups which has come up in last uh, one decade like maybe last 10 years 15 years which can, which is where the marketing is not so good but the product is good so we are trying to have a kind of a relation with them and kind of kind of agreement with them that we can be their marketing partners and uh, we can market their products very well so same uh, business uh, uh, like a principle what i am following right now i am, i want to duplicate it or i want to repeat it in india also in terms of uh, making this atmanirbhar bharat really successful uh, where the uh, the buying houses will actually start buying and stop uh, importing a lot of fabric right so, so now comes the question which i you know personally love to ask our bodies and that is uh, what are your feelings on winning this global achievers award right. from global achievers forum uh, it's it's a fantastic feeling and uh, the the real uh, thing is that this is the first time i feel very much attached and very much close to the indian uh, thing uh, through this award because it also you know it's not only about about the award it is also about the responsibility which which comes to you so by uh, having this um, uh, like um, uh, exposure or award or whatever we we can say i also feel a lot of responsibility that how i can bring my uh, indian uh, partners uh, to come up and uh, have a major share in the things which is going around and can can have uh, a lot of chance where they can push their products into the global market why only in india they can like i i also want to create the scope for them where they can export the goods to to china or some other part of the world because uh, what i am seeing is that the garment industry is shrinking and it is mostly uh, not shrinking i mean uh, it is getting f- uh, full basically bangladesh is full and china is not uh, making much and then uh, other countries are focusing on different uh, other kind of garments like active knits jackets these kind of things so india is is uh, traditionally a, a country who is uh, good in making tops and embellishments and uh, you know lightweight fabrics all these things are uh, traditionally very nice in india and uh, uh, i think uh, we could have a chance of making bottoms and jackets these kind of products also in near future so uh, my I, my uh, working is towards making our indian factories uh, uh, like a part of this uh, supply chain and not only for the local use they should only they could they can only on, also export to different countries and uh, the revenue can increase a lot right sir and you are truly an achiever i must say so now you know moving ahead as we have discussed a lot about your professional journey so far and you know whatever the future plans are having for yourself or for the company if you can also tell us a bit about your social contribution please 
Uh, social contribution, as I rightly said, uh, we are a young company. Uh, so we are right now, we are focusing on employment and training sector. And this, I I personally go to a lot of forums. I, uh, I, I'm i called for, I've, I've been always, a lot of times I've been called for keynote speaking and all these kind of things. So uh, right now, in terms of uh, social responsibility, my focus is to upgrade, uh, you know, many, uh, uh, like um, uh, the the, the uh, people who are not uh, very how to say the financially not very good but they have capabilities they just need to be trained well and garment industry is such a one kind of industry where a lot of laborers can be uh, it can absorb a lot of laborers so uh, my focus is and a lot of uh, like the ladies and women can be working in this sector so if they can be trained well for stitching for there are a lot of activities in uh, during the garment making process so if they are absorbed well in in this industry i think a lot of employment problem can be solved and this industry is definitely an answer to uh, employment issues so our focus um, like uh, when we talk about csr or uh, social responsibilities our focus right now is to train as much as uh, people uh, to come to this industry and uh, do their, uh, like uh, give their service. At the same time, I'm also working with many of my friends who are uh, like uh, working towards this goal. Uh, we want to achieve this goal. I also worked with uh, like my, one of my uh, classmate is uh, working in uh, Wajir Advisors and uh, they also have some programs to train the Jhakhand uh, workers to uh, come to this uh, apparel industry as a uh, like um, a shop floor uh, managers so uh, yeah we are we want to uh, serve this industry well in terms of social responsibility by giving training and employment right sir. so now before concluding our lovely session uh, what message or mantra you would like to give to our younger generation who wants to become a successful entrepreneur someday uh, there is there is only one uh, mantra is that uh, when uh, you think you are uh, you have that uh, thing in in yourself like entrepreneurship you don't think too much you know a lot of time we have i think everybody in india uh, or this generation everybody have this acumen have this thinking but a lot of time they have to they they just uh, uh, kill it because they have some other priorities or other responsibilities which but, um, you know, I also come from a very humble background, uh, you know, I come from Bihar and then, um, you know, we have like the background wise, it was not a lot of support, but still when we, uh, when I started, there were challenges, uh, but then there are ways also. When you start taking the challenges, you also find the ways. If you don't take the challenge, you the ways will also, you cannot see the ways also to solve it. So my uh, mantra to success is that uh, you please keep uh, in introspecting yourself that what you are good at, what is your uh, ability which you which is unique in you or which you always think that uh, that is your strong point. Keep discovering that. Once you have discovered and once you think that this is uh, this is what I am, then uh, try to convert it into a kind of business. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of platforms now, the socially and every there are a lot of apps lot of websites a lot of things it's not so difficult to channelize in uh, this uh, at this point of time so you can definitely challenge uh, channelize your uh, contacts your networks and based on your unique uh, skill set and uh, uh, unique uh, personality or interpersonal skills whatever we say you can definitely definitely you will find a lot of people who come to support you come to help you and uh, try to uh, uh, make you as a winner uh, in whatever you do and failure is failure. Sometimes it comes, but uh, just take it sportingly, so, uh, you know, and just learn from it and move on. So th that is what. And that's a great piece of advice, I must say. So thank you so very much for joining with us today, sir. It was lovely talking to you. And I wish you all the success for all your future endeavors as well. And, you know, may you continue to inspire us the way you are doing. Thank you so very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.